Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's December 18th. Today, we celebrate the man who cleverly saved the Royal Botanic Garden during the French Revolution. We'll also learn about a woman who lavishly decorated her bathroom with a garden theme almost a hundred years ago. We'll look back at a successful bid to save a 700-year-old Christmas tree in Oregon. And we'll remember one of the great nurserymen and rosarians of our time. After two years, we still feel his loss. And we'll hear words about the peace that comes in winter by the writer Rachel Peden. We grow that garden library today with a book subtitled, How to Have Your Yard and Eat It Too. And then we'll wrap things up with the story of an arboretum that came to life thanks to the vision and obsession of one Atlanta man. And it's quite the story. But first, I just wanted to take a second to tell you about the Daily Gardener Friday newsletter. Each and every Friday, Even when the show is on break, subscribers to the newsletter get an exclusive email from me with some super useful content, including helpful reminders and tips for the week to help you grow as a gardener. I also include a handy list for you that features all of the books from the Grow That Garden Library that were mentioned on the show the past week. So that's all right there for you. And then I provide a brand new botanist profile along with two pieces of botanical poetry that have not been shared on the show. And you'll also get plenty of garden-inspired recipes, gifts, and hacks. I love all of that. And finally, I like to make the newsletter a little more personal. So you'll see photos and stories about my own home and garden, in addition to exclusive updates about the show. I think of it as a little behind-the-scenes VIP experience for superfans of the podcast. And don't forget that each week, one lucky subscriber will be chosen as a winner for a lovely gardening book from the Grow That Garden Library bookshelf. And I like to say, if you enjoy the podcast... You're going to love the newsletter. So head on over to the dailygardener.org and sign up for the free Friday newsletter today. Here's today's curated garden news. Today's article came from Sarah Wilson over at Gardening Etc. And she shares 10 plants that have stunning winter bark. And I thought of you guys right away because if you're looking out the window at your garden and you're feeling it's a little meh, then winter bark could really make a difference for you. So you're going to want to check this piece out. Now, if I recall correctly, Sarah included things like a yellow curly willow, which I thought was an excellent idea. I think she picked the one called Golden Curls. I think there's a Himalayan birch that's in there, as well as a paper bark maple, which is always beautiful. So if you're curious about what you can plant that will amp up the look and feel of your winter garden, you're going to want to go and check that out. And you can do that very easily over in the free Facebook group for the show. It's called the Daily Gardener Community, and it's where I put all of my curated news articles and original blog posts so that you don't have to take any notes or track anything down. So the next time you're on Facebook, just search for the Daily Gardener Community where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. Here's today's brevities. Today is the anniversary of the death of a French naturalist, biologist, and academic, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Lamarck died lonely, blind, and impoverished in Paris on this day, December 18th in 1829. He was buried in a common grave. We'll have to raise a glass to Jean-Baptiste today. 
Jean Baptiste was regarded as the father of evolutionary theory, and he paved the way for Darwin's origin of the species. By 1809, Lamarck had worked out a complete theory of evolution. He even speculated on the inheritability of acquired traits. Lamarck believed that all life evolved upward, beginning with dead matter and then progressing from simple to complex forms and ultimately ending in human perfection. He was a very progressive thinker, and he also proposed an early version of continental drift. By 1790, Lamarck was working as a botanist at the Royal Herbarium in Paris, and as the French Revolution intensified, it was Lamarck who saved the royal garden by quietly and ingeniously renaming it. Instead of the sign saying, the royal garden, it simply read, a garden of plants. Lamarck's little sign trick worked, and the garden was saved. And it was on this day, December 18th in 1930, that the Boston Globe shared a little snippet called Bathrooms Like Gardens. Well, of course, I had to read that. Here's a fun excerpt. Lady Cromer has her favorite flower, the iris, as a motif of her bathroom. The walls are painted with growing irises in flower on the bank of a river, the river being the bath itself, and the whole effect is that of a charming garden. That was quite the deal for 1930. And it was on this day, December 18th, in 1958, that the Statesman Journal out of Salem, Oregon, reported on a 700-year-old tree that was saved from the axe. It said this, In Seaside, Oregon, a 700-year-old Christmas tree, a big, giant Christmas tree, has been added to a five-acre tree farm park dedicated to the public. The Sitka spruce is 195 feet tall and 15 feet 9 inches in diameter, and it contained enough wood to build six two-bedroom houses. It says the ink was barely dry on England's Magna Carta when the spruce sprouted. The tree passed its 500th birthday before the American Revolution. And today is the second anniversary of the death of the rose breeder and writer, David Austin, who died on this day, December 18th, 2018. You guys remember that? When David passed away, I found some old advertisements that he posted on The Observer back in 1973. And it's incredible to think that that post was already 12 years after David had created his first commercially available rose, which he called the Constance Spry. Some good rose trivia for you. Anyway, this 1973 ad shows very clearly how early on David had found his calling. It read, Old-fashioned roses, shrub roses, rare and unusual roses, Many of our own breeding, roses of charm and fragrance, the country's finest collection. And then he was offering for free his book called A Handbook of Roses. Rest in peace, David Austin. In Unearthed Words, today's words are by the ecologist and writer Rachel Peden from her book The Land, The People. Under the big swamp maple in the east lot, the gray geese and the white pilgrim ganders gather silently. During winter nights, they sleep in the open-faced tool shed, and often in the night, they think of new expressions of scorn and at once utter them. We are the watchdogs, we geese. We saved Rome. 
that peaceful morning, they walked on the clinging, moist snow and were still. They looked thoughtful, as if contemplating the sense of peace that provided the whole farmscape. I realized, to my astonishment, that if total peace ever actually befell the whole world all at one time, it would be the most spectacular sight mankind has ever seen. Nobody would be able to believe it, or perhaps even to survive it. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Edible Landscaping with a Permaculture Twist by Michael Judd. This book came out in 2013, and the subtitle is How to Have Your Yard and Eat It Too. In this book, Michael shares his life at his Long Creek homestead in Frederick, Maryland. Michael's gorgeous property includes 25 acres of mixed woodland, food forests, gardens, and a nursery designed for experimentation and education. Michael's book is his how-to manual for following in his footsteps, transforming a sea of grass into a flourishing edible landscape that pleases the eye as well as the taste buds. With his delightful personality and quick humor, Michael explains the complexities of permaculture design in his simple do-it-yourself projects like an herb spiral, food forests, raised bed gardens, earthen ovens, uncommon fruits, outdoor mushroom cultivation, and more. This book features beautiful photography and practical designs that can be easily grafted to the urban landscape's microhabits, scaled up to the acreage of homesteads, or adapted to already flourishing landscapes. This book is 144 pages of an edible landscaping primer with a permaculture twist to help anyone with the desire to turn their landscape into a luscious and productive edible Eden. You can get a copy of Edible Landscaping with a Permaculture Twist by Michael Judd and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $14. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was on this day, December 18th in 1999, that the Marshfield News Herald out of Marshfield, Wisconsin, published a story called Dream Fulfilled. Georgia man lovingly cultivates arboretum at his home. The story features Tom Cox, a man with a passion for trees. Here's an excerpt. Tom, 54, is a boy on a great adventure. It's as if he's played in every tree's branches, smelled and felt every leaf. He uses careful, precise words when he talks about the textures of leaves, crisp, refined, leathery, or lacy. It's the same with bark. One is striated, another like patchwork, still another is smooth like silk. Tom describes in meticulous detail how certain trees will look like in 10 or 15 years. He envisions the blossoms, the leaf color, or berries that the trees will display at different ages and seasons. That's a gift. Tom purchased 14 acres, built a house, planted trees on half the property, and started his private arboretum, which he shares with garden clubs and groups like Trees Atlanta. Now he has 600 trees, with varieties representing 38 countries, and he tends them all himself. Small signs identify each by genus and species. His wife, Evelyn, does some weeding and mulching, but he doesn't ask her to water or mow. He cuts the grass, careful to avoid nicking a tree. 
Now, Evelyn travels with her husband to many weekend plant shows, and she calls their 10-year-old station wagon the dirt mobile, and Tom calls it the plant mobile. Evelyn laughs about her trips home, crowded by some 60 to 70 plants. Evelyn said, I've had to fend off an occasional spider or two, but most of all, I just enjoy seeing him enjoy it. When he first started, he'd buy bare root plants and call me out every Saturday to look at a new bundle of sticks and at tree bark. He's really into bark, you know. To Tom, unusual trees aren't hard to grow, just hard to find because nobody asks for them. His Japanese apricot, which blooms bright orange in February, is one example. He said everybody would have one if they only knew about it. And interestingly enough, Tom often spots unusual trees in local hardware stores. One of his favorite evergreen trees is a Japanese black cedar he bought at an Ace Hardware in South Atlanta. Great find. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Beerbaum, Kiana Rayleigh, Maddie Doyle, Natalie Decker, and Eric Begay. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media. You can follow the show on Instagram, and listeners always have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. All the stories and books that are featured on the show can be found over at thedailygardener.org, thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. Last but not least, you can share your own gardener greetings on the show by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.